Today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use an old tractor, skid steer, excavator that doesn't have all of the buttons and wires to still control some of these new attachments that require multiple different flows. So things like concrete mixers, uh, power brooms, Harley rakes, and so on. These require multiple different buttons or switches, but I'm going to show you how to wire up this little cheap easy switch and your old machine can still run this even if you only have one button all right guys today's video we're going to be wiring up an actuator i tilted this attachment up on its side to make it a little easier to see here and you're either going to have one or two of these plugs all right i'm going to stop some people right in the beginning i'm going to use terms like plug switch actuator I understand some of these are solenoids, solenoid coils, hydraulic valves. But if you know the difference between all of those things, you're probably not watching a how-to video on a super basic and simple setup of a basic switch on and off with two wires, positive, negative. So I'm going to put the actual terminology in parentheses and little words. I'll do some minor editing. This video is meant to be quick. It's meant to be easy. I'm gonna use basic terms. If you wanna correct me, do it in the comments. I always appreciate your input. Of these plugs. And you're only gonna have two wires going to them. It's just gonna be a positive and a negative. Now what is cool about this actuator is that you only need one button up, down, or just push on and off, even an old machine and you're gonna be able to run multiple controls. Now this here is a cement mixer, so you're gonna push the button up down and it is going to spin the mixer. Now if you click the switch that we're gonna wire up, then it is gonna move it down to the chute, sliding the chute in and out, the hydraulic ram. So again, this is for, if you have an old machine, doesn't have, uh, actually if you don't have hardly any uh, electrical hookups, this will allow you to plug it in and use one button to run two or more functions. So let's move into it. So here's where we plug in to the actuator itself. There's going to be four prongs all the way around, but in this one, you only use two. Now this cord, all it does is it splits and it runs into the switch on and off and to your cable, which is just positive and negative on the battery terminal. So let's move to wiring the connector plug. Here's what it looks like beforehand and where it goes and a look at the wire and plug itself. Now, if your plug did not come wired, here's the wiring schematic for it. It's really simple. There is just a positive and a negative. We do not use the ground. So here's the wiring schematic if you don't have it. All we need is a Phillips screwdriver to screw this in to hold it in place. And that's it. Simple as it gets. All right, I threw a battery in here real quick to just wire up this switch. So blue is negative and brown is positive. And you can look down here, I'm switching that back and forth. So that is switching from running the electric motor that spins the brush and it switches it over to, now it's gonna reroute hydraulic fluid into the two rams, which is going to tilt this back and forth. So I didn't want to run everything all the way into the battery of the machine itself because I'm eventually going to wire everything up to where it just goes to my connector here. But just want to show you how it works. Pretty cool little system that even if you have a, a really basic machine that only has one trigger, you can still use this attachment because that uh, this little switch, I was gonna call it a button, but it'll switch it going back and forth. So now we're gonna go side to side. All right, here we go. We're gonna 
switch the button, which is gonna flip it back and forth. And now I'm using the same trigger to move it side to side. It's a little bit violent. It really shakes the whole thing, so. But uh, yeah, just moving up and down. And we, we can now alter back and forth. So then we're just gonna switch the button back. Boom, there we go, we're back to sweeping. Your unit should come with a wiring schematic Pay close attention to this, but also double check your work because this stuff from China, it doesn't always make sense and it's not always wired uh, correctly. So you can always trace the wires back real quick. In this case, it's gray for positive. So it's not even a gray wire if you look at this. Uh, now I did test these and blue is negative. So here I threw two little alligator clips on it. And the reason I threw alligator clips on it is if you don't want to wire this all the way back, which, you know, that's going to have to feed either through the cab, um, you can wire it along the arm or whatever. But if you have a unit that you don't use this very often, just throw in a little lawnmower battery or a little jump battery and you can just alligator clip it because all this actuator switch is doing is just switching the hydraulic flow you don't have to have power to it all the time. It just takes very little power and throw it in there. Reminder here to zip tie all these lines out of the way. You don't want these to get caught up in anything or be sheared off. Uh, they're pretty chintzy, so get them out of the way. This is kind of a, a chintzy setup, but it is a universal. I like to run my cord up and over. Now it'll just kind of pinch it in here. Now what this does is it keeps this line fairly tight, but if you move the bucket up and down, it's not gonna rip out. So you're tight when it's all the way down. If you move the bucket up and down, you create a little bit of slack in the wire. Now with this unit, we're uh, we're using a, a broom, so we're not gonna go real high with the bucket there are some buckets you can go really high with that you have to set up a little bit differently but so just a little fyi learn from experience of ripping these cords out